Hold on to your hats, folks, because things are about to get messy. In the world of high finance, drama is never far away. And this latest development is no exception. UBS, a Swiss banking giant, is suing Bank of America. Yes, you heard that right. This isn't just a minor squabble. It's a full-blown legal battle between two of the biggest names in the banking industry. And not for chump change, either. The stakes are incredibly high. We're talking a cool $200 million. Ouch, that's a sum that would make anyone's head spin. But what exactly is at the heart of this colossal lawsuit? But why? What could possibly cause this kind of financial feud? Let's dig in. The roots of this conflict go deep, involving complex financial instruments and alleged misconduct. UBS claims that Bank of America misled them in a series of transactions that have now gone sour. These transactions, which were supposed to be lucrative, have instead resulted in significant losses for UBS. The Swiss bank is now seeking to recover these losses through the courts. This isn't just about the money, though. It's also about reputation and trust in the financial world. When giants like UBS and Bank of America clash, it sends ripples throughout the entire industry. Other banks and financial institutions are watching closely, as the outcome of this lawsuit could set a precedent for future disputes. So stay tuned as we follow this unfolding drama. Will UBS succeed in its quest for justice, or will Bank of America manage to defend itself against these serious allegations? One thing's for sure. This is a story that will keep the financial world buzzing for a long time to come. It all boils down to the 2008 financial crisis, remember that? Yeah, good times. The world watched in horror as the financial markets crumbled and the ripple effects were felt across the globe. Banks were failing, people were losing their homes and the stock market was in free fall. It was a time of uncertainty and fear and the repercussions are still being felt today. See, UBS got burned by those toxic mortgages. These were the infamous subprime loans that were handed out like candy, with little regard for the ability of borrowers to repay them. When the housing bubble burst, these mortgages turned into financial time bombs, and UBS was left holding the bag. The losses were staggering, and the bank was desperate to find someone to blame. They blamed Countrywide Financial, a company Bank of America later acquired. Countrywide was one of the biggest players in the subprime mortgage game, and their practices were a big part of what led to the crisis. When Bank of America bought Countrywide, they inherited not just the company's assets, but also its liabilities, and that included a mountain of bad loans. UBS says Countrywide promised to cover their losses. This is where things get really interesting. According to UBS, Countrywide had agreed to indemnify them against any losses from these toxic mortgages. In other words, if things went south, Countrywide would pick up the tab. But as you can imagine, Bank of America wasn't too keen on honoring that agreement. That's what those Wall Street guys call indemnification. It's a fancy legal term, but the concept is pretty simple. It's like an insurance policy. If you suffer a loss, the other party has to make you whole. But in the high-stakes world of finance, these agreements are often the subject of intense legal battles. Fancy word, simple idea. You break it, you buy it. It's a principle that applies in many areas of life, but in the world of finance, it can mean the difference between survival and bankruptcy. For UBS, the stakes couldn't be higher. They're fighting to recover hundreds of millions of dollars, and the outcome of this battle could have far-reaching implications for the entire financial industry. Now, Countrywide wasn't exactly known for its sound financial decisions. They were handing out mortgages like candy on Halloween. Problem was, these weren't your average run-of-the-mill mortgages. These were subprime loans given to borrowers with shaky credit. Think of it like giving a toddler a chainsaw. What could go wrong, right? So where does Bank of America fit into all of this? It's a question that has been on the minds of many, especially in the financial world. The bank, one of the largest in the United States, has a significant role in the unfolding drama. They're the ones who bought Countrywide, a mortgage lender that was at the heart of the subprime mortgage crisis. This acquisition was supposed to be a strategic move, but it has turned into a legal and financial nightmare. UBS, another major player in the banking industry, claims that this purchase makes Bank of America responsible for the mess that ensued. Bank of America, however, is keeping quiet. Their silence is deafening. In the face of mounting legal challenges and public scrutiny, the bank's executives have chosen to remain tight-lipped. This has led to speculation and uncertainty among investors and the general public. They're not saying much about the lawsuit. Maybe they're hoping it'll just go away. Spoiler alert, it won't. The legal battle is far from over and the implications for Bank of America could be significant. The outcome of this case could set a precedent for how similar cases are handled in the future. For now, all eyes are on Bank of America as they navigate this complex and high-stakes situation. Section 5, The Legal Battlefield. This isn't just a financial spat. It's a full-blown legal battle. 
and it's happening in a New York state court. The lawyers are sharpening their pencils and the judges are bracing themselves. This thing could drag on for years. Get ready for some serious legal drama. Section six, what's next? What happens next is anyone's guess. Will UBS win their $200 million? Will Bank of America cough up the dough? Or will this end in a messy settlement? Only time will tell. One thing's for sure though, this case is a big deal. Section seven, the stakes are high. This case isn't just about two banks fighting over money. It's about accountability. It's about the fallout from the 2008 crisis. And it's a reminder that the actions of the powerful have consequences. Stay tuned, folks. This story is far from over. Section 8. Stay informed. Want to know how this financial thriller ends? Of course you do. Subscribe to our channel for all the latest updates. We'll break down the complex legal jargon and keep you informed every step of the way. Don't miss out.